Right, so here's a monster of a clearing job. And yeah, that is all bindweed. Uh, it seems like they're clued up about the stuff. Uh, they're not going to be rotivating it because it spreads. They're just going to get um, a membrane, I suppose, the sounds of it, uh, some sort of uh, cover to put on what I've cleared. They're going to burn it. They're allowed to have a bit of a bonfire here, so they're going to have it in a great big pile and burn it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear as much as I can and then spend the rest of the time blowing it into a pile. Uh, there is brambles in here, but if you're wondering what bindweed looks like, uh, there's your flower, there's your leaf, and it just literally clings to everything. It wraps itself around everything, and I'm guessing that that's what's happened there. That you've got brambles here, and that the bindweed has just wrapped it round itself, and the brambles, because I'm hoping there's nothing underneath all that. But we shall find out soon, in, soon enough. So I've got my two tools with me, two attachments. I've actually got two motors with me as well, just in case I need two. And uh, so I've got the brush cutting mulching braid blade and the uh, standard trimmer. It does look a little bit woody under there. So I'm, I'm going to assume when I come to here, I'm going to need the mulching blade, mulch all this down. And then obviously here, it'll be just trimmed. So, <laughs> so it's going to be a challenge to clear as much of this in a day as I can. Right, so Oregon mulching blade. This is the Oregon mulching blade. It does not have to be sharp. Um, there is a bit of an edge on it obviously just have a nice nice edge on there but it doesn't have to be sharp it's not about being sharp it's about just literally just smashing it all off that's basically all you're doing is just smashing everything up and then obviously I've got my other attachment for a strimmer I'll show you the uh, motor I'm using I've got two but the one I'm using mainly is going to be this one. This one's the still 130. 130, not 131, but the 130. KM 130. It's about three years old now, and that'll start pretty much first time. As you can see, I'm wearing trousers today, not a kilt, uh, PPE, boots, helmet. Tough gloves. Let's get some drone footage and get started.
then I warm it is for I am absolutely so well Ted start the van up and the razor bean is because you need to charge keep your phone charged. Uh, so not only did I have problems getting the brush cutter blade on, but I've also forgot my harness. One of the annoying things about me is that I I don't hoard stuff, but I I have this thing where no I won't get rid of that, I won't get rid of that, I won't get rid of that, and then before you know it, I got rid of it, and then as soon as I do, I need it. Well I've had my harness in the van for about well, since I bought the van. And I've been shuffling it around and moving it around because it's it, it's one of those things you can't just sort of like screw up and put in a bag or something like that because of the way it's designed so it's been shoved around from pillar to post and in the end I've obviously just took it out of the van thinking oh I'm not going to use this I've had it in the van for a year I'm not going to use it but the very day that I actually need it it's not there now I would do a list do a list when I do a certain job think right I need to do brush cutting today let's have a look at the brush cutting list oh I need that 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 and that but me in my infinite wisdom thinks I'll remember but I won't and that is so frustrating so what I've done is luckily I've got some ratchet straps and <laughs> I've, I've done a sort of a sling over my shoulder and it seems to be working because I have got the 1301 uh, the 131 but to use that without a harness or anything all day it just it would just kill me so at least I've got something and uh, if I turn you around you can see how far I've got I've been going for about an hour and a half so and considering how deep that was you, you can't see you just can't see but it was knee deep and so I've done quite a lot so I'm quite confident I should get the lot done. You see how deep it is if you look down there lot. That's probably the worst area. It wasn't all like that, but it was there was quite a few bits that were like that. So but it doesn't matter about the height, it's just mulching it down. And as you can see I've got my uh, steel mower and I'm just going over it quickly just to collect all the grass and I'm just piling it up there. So So yeah, I'm quite confident I should get the majority of this done. I know I'm not gonna clear it all. There's a lot of rubbish in there. That's what's slowing me down more than anything else is the rubbish. I'm having to do a litter pick and pick up bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. ah. I'll show you where I'm at. Right. I brush cut up to about that area there. So this strip down there, I've got the mower down. Because uh, what I've been doing is I've been brush cutting it and then picking it all up with the mower because it makes it easier you can see how big the pile is it's going to have a mass of uh, stuff to get rid of and that's come out of from over there that pile of wood I might just leave that because it's just too much to move and the truth of it is all I'm moving is one from one place to another I mean it's up to the chap what he wants them to do I'll stream over it and clear it all out a bit make it look a little bit uh, give it a bit more easy access but I'm going to get a drone out afterwards and film myself doing all this area here because that's the crux of the problem. Um, so yeah, it is nearly, well it's half twelve now so that's not done, done too bad at all really. I think what's helped is just using the mower to be honest. It's really cracked it down and um, what I'll do once I've cut it all down I'll go over once again with the mower and then probably once again with a, bl with a blower just to blow it all down and that way all I've got to do is just lay some stuff on top and mulch it that's what I would suggest is get some really heavy duty matting lay it all on top and put a load of bark chips over the top eventually eventually you will sort of uh, cut down on the bowling weed but as you can see it's all in that that area there it just won't ever go away but you'll be able to uh, reduce the amount and you'll, you won't be picking out buying weed out your own garden if that's what you do that would be my suggestion it's some seriously heavy duty matting but you've got to you've got to do it right from the edge all the way down I mean it, just to stop it from going underneath 
and then popping out because you'll always get it at the sides wherever it is but at least if you put your heavy duty matting down you put your mulch on top and then grow your stuff on top of that you shouldn't have the issue of picking out bindweed where your plants are in theory Please remember, like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. 
very, very important to hit that bell button. And don't forget to watch some of my other videos. There's quite a few on there. Right. Some of them may be boring. But it supports every video you watch, every advert you see, supports this channel. And it keeps it going. It doesn't keep it going. I'll carry on regardless. But it does help me. It puts a, it, it pays for this. Well, there's hardly any left now. It pays for me coffee. So if you want to buy me a coffee, watch about watch every single video on my channel about half a dozen times, and you might might put 10p towards me coffee. So if you do that, I really appreciate it. Every watch and every advert you see, I really appreciate watching because you're helping support my channel. 